Okay, so we are now recording. Great, and uh, thank you everybody and welcome to the November 4th, 2022 meeting of the Town of Amherst Solar Bylaw Working Group. And uh, thanks again for everybody working hard uh, together on this. Um, I am, uh, I guess, first order of business is to um, the re regrettable uh, uh, in information to Dan that you're our minute taker this week <laughs> and hope you're okay with that. Um, yeah, great. Thank you. And um, just to uh, 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 Martha, that puts you on deck for next next time. Okay. Super. <laughs> um, according to my revolving <laughs> notes here. Great. Okay, so um, so great. Um, yeah, hopefully a few more people will join us uh, as we move forward, but I guess we have a quorum and we can start the business of the um, working group um, in any case. Uh, and um, sorry, I too many screens open and looking for my agenda. Yep, okay, great. So, um, great. So the first order of business is to review and vote on the minutes from October 21st meeting, the last meeting. Um, have people had a chance to review those and um, prepared to vote on those? Or are there any, let me ask if there are any comments or um, suggested edits to the minutes from last meeting. Looks good. I appreciate um, Bob, your minutes from last Thank time. Thank you. All right, hearing, uh, hearing none, uh, do we have a motion to accept the minutes? So move. All right. Thank you, Martha. A second on that? I'll second. Great. I think we'll need a roll okay. roll call. Yep. Voice votes. So Reger? Yes. Corcoran? Yes. Hanner? Yes. Brooks? Yes. And Dwayne, I'm sorry, Chris had her hand up, but I did want to mention okay. that um and I this may be what she was going to comment on that was that um Jack Jemsek unfortunately had a death in the family and oh, he no. won't be joining us today. Oh, okay. Okay. Um yeah, I think he might have mentioned that the last time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They had to go to yes. California or something. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Okay. And and Janet, I have the impression she might be thinking that the meeting starts at noon. <laughs> Don't know whether it's possible, Stephanie, for you to give her a quick phone call or oh, here um, she's oh, here she comes. Here. Okay. She heard Am you. I? Yep. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Sorry, okay. I'm late. Sorry. Yep. No. Okay, great. Um, and actually then with that, everybody's accounted for, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, Laura will be yeah, showing join up us um, right, yeah. when she can. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Well, Janet, <laughs> we've we voted on the minutes already. So <laughs> oh good. Things are moving quickly then. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's move on to um the next agenda item, um, which is staff updates. Um, and uh I'll first ask for Stephanie and then and then Chris, um, mm -hmm. with with note, noting Chris that we'll spend some time later in the agenda for sure on the um on the draft. Um, section of the bylaw that you you provided us. But Stephanie, first, any updates from sustainability director land? Sure. Yes. Um, just to quickly, the um, GZA team met with the ECAC uh, at their last meeting and gave the same presentation that gave to you all as well. Um, and then we had a, um, I, this may have happened before the last meeting. I'm sorry, I can't remember timelines. Um, but we met with a small with a small group of us met with the um, GIS specialist in town to sort of talk about how they will proceed with the mapping tool. And we talked about methodology and what the best approach is. And we're looking at um, we've asked them to develop just a, an example of what it would look like using a parcel format versus 
a grid format, which would be like of a of a specific size, um, and they would go with the most granular size that they can, where they can actually get meaningful data. So um, that's where that stands, um, and that's probably the most I have for an update today. Could you could you explain that difference? Yeah, so in, in the parcel size, they'd be looking at just the entire parcel. So if you're looking at the feasibility for um, for solar development on a parcel, there may be um, there may be you know like specific restrictions that apply that might make it appear that the the um, the potential for solar development doesn't exist. Whereas if you look at it just specifically on a grid size, so you basically just identify a portion of a parcel, um, then you're just looking at whether in that in that square of in that you know sort of dimensions of that particular area would you be able to put solar is there access to um, the grid and what's the slope and that kind of thing so it's it's a more it's a more um kind of technical just is it feasible analysis looking at um a grid approach so the grid like will free up more sites for solar then because you're just saying like in this spot could it go exactly so yeah, you know like could it well, would yeah. it be able to mm -hmm. it's not you know it's just uh you know what what could potentially work i think duane has probably could speak to this more than i so go ahead Duane. i think I'm, I'm thinking there's probably trade-offs either way but uh, the 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 concern with the parcel level is that some parcels are very big uh, and if the idea is really to come up with sort of a yes or no or yes no maybe uh, for each um, defined region then there are you know sufficient number of parcels in town <clears throat> that are substantially large that have within that parcel itself there's um, mm -hmm. variation of, of uh, types of, of land and, and suitability of land uh, and so it was a little bit, there was some concern raised, um, uh, or at least the trade-off is, you know, can, if we look at it at a parcel level, then we may not be able to get down to the granularity of uh, saying, okay, on this parcel, here's an area within within this parcel that solar might, might make sense, but here's other areas that wouldn't make sense. Um, whereas if it's a, if it's a grid-based, um, I think there's you can I think the idea was the grid base would be pretty uh, relatively small. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, I think it has it has the advantage of being able to look a little bit more specifically at each patch of land, if you will. Uh, it has the disadvantage of not and I'm not sure exactly how the GIS analysts do this. It doesn't necessarily know um, what's proximate to that um, mm -hmm. piece of land uh, and whether that land is. Um, uh, you know, maybe even crossing a parcel border. Yeah, I, I understand that because, you know, because also parcels can change, like someone could buy parcels yeah, that, and can buy yeah. them or cut yeah. them up and things yeah, like that. Yeah, that was another issue. That right. so, so then, so it sounds like the grid is like more information about like where solar can go. Um, what about the interconnection piece? So what if it's far, it's a good spot, but it's far away from interconnection? Is that just noted? Like, oh, it's, pseudo, it's you know, you could produce X here, but you're going to have hell or expense to get it there. Is that, will they present that information? I think that's part of what they'll provide in the report. So the, you know, the, the initial assessment, like this map that might show where solar has potential, it's, again, it's more just where it may be feasible, but it's not exact, right? It's just saying it has the potential to go here. Um, and, and we don't know how things may change, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of grid support, battery storage, mm -hmm. or any of that, you know? So it's just like, here's a feasible location is really all it is. And again, we're talking about the feasibility for this analysis. And so whether it has the ability to be supported by the grid or, potentially battery storage would be something they would likely address in the report. Okay. Great. All right, anything else, Stephanie, on your, on your end? No. Great, okay. Um, great, Chris, any um, 
updates from the planning department? Um, the only update I have is that the Maureen Pollock has arranged to have um, a training for the Zoning Board of yeah. Appeals. It's expected that the Zoning Board will be reviewing solar applications in the next few months. And so um, she's arranged to have someone from KP Law give a training to the Zoning Board of Appeals about you know what it can and can't do as far as regulating um, solar installation. And that is going to be on November 17th, I believe, at 16. 18th. Oh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. I was looking at the wrong date. Okay, yep, yep, you got November it. November yep. 17th, which is a Thursday at six o'clock in the evening. And the um, members of the Solar Bylaw Working Group are invited. Stephanie sent out an invitation and the members of the planning board are also invited. Um, and as far as the planning board goes, I would like planning board members to notify me if they're planning to attend so that I can post it as a planning board meeting if a quorum of the planning board um, mm -hmm intends to be there. So anyway, I think this is an exciting opportunity to hear from uh, KP Law about permitting of, of so, uh, solar installations, um, even without you know having a specific solar bylaw, what we can and can't do. And I encourage you all to attend. And Chris, that I would assume that's relevant for this group too. If there's a quorum of this group, then we need to post that as a meeting as well. I would recommend that, yeah. Could because be they won't. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Janet. Uh, I, if it's just informational, can we just sit and listen? I mean, I don't mind posting it, but I just wonder if it's if people are just coming in to listen. If they're just listening, then we don't need to post it. But I think there will be a temptation to ask questions and make comments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's you know us well, huh? <laughs> based on based on lots of experience. Okay, good idea. Um. So, uh, just on that, Stephanie, for the for the um this working group solar bylaw working group should we inform you if we plan yes. to attend um, please let me know asap i i'd okay. like to attend in all my respect you know various yeah i students. also plan to attend i'm not sure if do we need to let you know so sort of like more formally by an email or something or is this fine you could i mean if we have a quorum right now if all four of you said or five yeah. of you say I we're gonna that. attend then i'll just post it pressures yeah, on robert <laughs> um, and we also have uh, Laura and um, uh, Jack that may may uh, also opt to attend. Okay, so I'll just post it. Yeah, it, it seems mm -hmm. safer than not. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, I guess just re, um, you mentioned KP Law, and, and obviously they are also we are we as a working group are also waiting for um, a, for them to attend and report back on the questions we gave to KP Law, um, and I know that th that's going to happen after um, uh, the legal counsel, uh, uh, the the lawyer I forget his name who is back from family leave, Jonathan Murray. Uh, what is the name again, Jonathan? Jonathan Murray. Jonathan Murray. Yeah. Um, can you remind us if you know offhand when when he'll join our next meeting? So or the idea was the, mm -hmm. the the plan was that he would provide comment um, probably within the next week or so. Oh, okay. And then would attend the meeting. I think on December second, if I'm correct. Great. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes, that's a Friday. So I think the, the goal was to have him attend the December 2nd meeting, but he would provide responses to the questions prior to that date so that when he comes to meet with the group, you can have a more informed discussion and sort of be a little further along in the review of his responses. Okay, great. Yeah, appreciate that and, and look forward to that. Um, I guess, Stephanie, just um abundance of caution um just in terms of his schedule we did move the meeting time to 11 30 uh and it was one before do you can we make sure he's available <laughs> yeah we'll we'll uh, check in okay. with him prior to that date. okay okay awesome okay any comments or thoughts on uh for stephanie or chris Super. Okay. Um, then I'd like to have uh, committee updates as well from um, any of us that um, 
uh, liaise from the uh, from from other committees. Um, I can say for ECAC, uh, I was going to mention that GZA also presented to 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 us at ECAC that Stephanie mentioned. Uh, but other than that, solar wasn't really on the agenda at our last meeting. It's kind of an every other meeting discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, no, nothing really to, uh, update from ECAC. Um, anybody else on, on the other committees? Nothing from planning board. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. And, and actually, uh, Jack and Laura, the other reps, um, who are not, both not here. So, okay. Um, okay. Um, ready to move on to then sort of the, uh, some of the more, the core of the agenda. Um, which is, um, um, for the first time <laughs> starting to look at some bylaw language, uh, which is, which is a wonderful milestone, uh, and, 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 and hats off and great appreciation to, uh, Chris and her team for, um, getting us started here. Um, what I thought I'd do is, um, uh, sort of break this up into, uh, I think three things on the agenda. One is I just um, at the last meeting we had a presentation or uh, just a quick overview of the uh, of the outline uh, for the bylaw, the overall outline for the bylaw. Again, that's it's not set in stone and it's not it can be <laughs> modified to some extent. But um, I just wanted to um, bring that back up for uh, discussion. We didn't have a, a whole lot of time to look at it ahead of time or discuss it at the last meeting. So I uh, just want to raise the opportunity for any additional thoughts or um, feedback on that for, for Chris. Um, then I want to um, uh, uh, um, turn over to Chris uh, for a, a um, sort of presentation or at least a brief uh, introduction to the um, language that she's provided um, uh, prior to this meeting that was part of the packet, uh, which is laying out um, sort of this um, introductory section of of, um, of um, uh, purpose and um, um, justifications. I forget exactly the terminology that's used, but um, uh, uh, to sort of sort of present that. Um, and then what I wanted to sort of figure out as a group is is what's going to be the process uh, of uh, of then um um just what what's the procedure for providing um feedback to chris uh for us to um provide consensus review and and feedback to chris as as uh, from this uh, working group uh on these on her draft language as it starts to unfold over time um and uh, and i have some sort of thoughts on that but would welcome a discussion on that so we can sort of um, so sort of start that process. My my guess is we're we're not prepared to offer Chris definitive and deliberated feedback on on the draft she sent around uh, for the introductory sec section at this point. Uh, so my sense is that you know it may be sort of a staggered thing where each section is presented, um, and then we have some process to review it, and then and then have a discussion and and some decisions on final edits recommendations we want to send back to Chris at the following meeting and sort of keep that process sort of going but want to sort of discuss that as we as we get to that um so the, we'll we'll spend some time on that now um and uh, and then we'll move on uh to um the next agenda item which is uh, sort of the ex uh, expert presentation uh and and um hopefully Laura will be able to join us and, and sort of conclude her her um a presentation on solar um, economics and, and uh, development. Um, and then we want to entertain other ideas for other sort of outside or internal information that we want to gather. And I know Janet had some um, ideas put together for that. Um, so, uh, and then we'll close out the meeting with some of the other uh, standing items. Um, okay, so let's back up then to the, uh, to the um, um, bylaw. Uh, and um, we do have we do have the outline um, that was in the packet from last meeting. Um, I'm happy to share my screen with that if more convenient, Stephanie. Um, if you don't have that, 
readily available. Either way, I'm happy to. Um, why don't you do that? Because mine I, I actually is a little bit um, edited at this point. <laughs> okay. Um, Give me a moment. Sorry, I don't think I have it in this packet. Hold yep, on. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. I can. I can. Um... I've got it. I just here. I've got it. Let me know that you can see it. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Looks good. Thank you. Um, okay. And I think we did we did take a, a relatively quick look at this last time, um, but um, uh, I want to get some opportunity here to uh, hear any further uh, input ideas. Um, uh, importantly, uh, I think Chris would agree this is not immutable outline uh as, as time goes on <laughs> we can we can uh um uh change things up a bit uh but it's it's really helpful to have this sort of starting point um and, and relative um a sense of of what's the components of the bylaw um but i did want to um um entertain any input or thoughts of anything that uh, might be missing uh or uh, recast it in any way. Um, and I had <laughs> one, maybe, um, and this is, uh, and, and maybe it's subject to um, what we hear back from KP Law. Because uh, one thing I, in, 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 in some of the input, and, and maybe we can rethink this once we hear back from KP Law as well, but one of the things I, put in front of KP law for their um, legal opinion uh, was to the extent that a bylaw could have any language with regard to um, uh, how um, how solar developers, how we might hold solar developers responsible for demonstrating um, economic benefits uh, to the community. Um, and uh, I don't know and and you know i don't know if that's a rogue idea to put in a in a zoning bylaw or whether that fits somewhere else uh but i would just throw it out here as being you know maybe if it does fit in a zoning bylaw and and if kp law says it's kosher um then um you know maybe we can have a section that um concerns um um language about um how the town will think about and request uh, or could request information uh, or um, options uh, with regard to um, uh, and demonstration of the of the of the applicant uh, demonstrating that they have tried to some extent this obviously would have to all be worked out uh, to maximize uh, to the extent feasible economic benefits to the community. Um, that was one idea I, I had is some another section uh, that might be um, a bit groundbreaking, uh, um, uh, but also would have have to meet meet the uh, um, what what's what's uh, applicable what's appropriate in 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 zoning uh, as well as uh, get the uh, positive input from uh, or approval from KP Law, mm. uh, but. Um, that was just one idea that I I had, um, um, and just throw that out there either for any comments on that or to uh, uh, um, um, uh, inc encourage any other uh, rogue ideas to put into permitting. <laughs> um, Janet, so um, so when I was looking at the um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission one. Um, their draft um, bylaw, there was a section on payment in lieu of taxes, like usually called the pilot payment. Oh. And I wasn't sure that that would properly belong in a zoning bylaw or it would be in the general bylaw. Um, but that that was part of it. And it just it struck me that it may not be like kosher to put it in the zoning bylaw. But I, I also, you know, thought that, you know, we should definitely make some recommendations if we 
agree to town council of, you know, say we're saying we want to, we want, you know, solar to go first to built environments, we could recommend to town councils, like ways to, in, you know, we can buy laws that would incentivize that in terms of, you know, um, delayed tax payments, or, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I wouldn't, I would love to encourage some other ideas that aren't like strictly within zoning to how to get us to where we want to go. So I'm not sure if a pilot would normally go in a zoning bylaw, a payment in lieu of taxes requirement, or if that would be in the general bylaw. But I definitely think we should be talking about it and, you know, maybe, maybe drafting ideas for that or incentives um, that the town could provide. Like, you know, if we're building something new and the town doesn't tax it for the first three years, that's kind of a, a savings for the um, developer. And then the town hasn't really been expecting that. It's not really counting on that until year four or something like that. So um, I was thinking about like having sort of like off zoning amendments that we could recommend. So. Mm. Great. Um, Chris, you have some thoughts on that? Oh, I wanted to say that I agree with Janet that this is a good topic to discuss. And I do think that it's outside of the realm of zoning. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the past, when I've been aware of pilots being discussed, they're, they're discussed generally, at, they're negotiated at the level of um, the town manager and maybe the assistant town manager and the um, town attorney. And of course, our um, you know finance director, and they don't usually come under the jurisdiction of either the zoning board of appeals or the planning board, which is um, who, you know, um, has jurisdiction over the zoning bylaw. So yes, it should be a topic that you discuss and then try to figure out how how to fit it in. And does it go into a general bylaw or? Um, and that is the question that I can ask uh, the town manager. Okay, great. Okay, general bylaw meaning um, a bylaw that's not part of zoning. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep, gotcha. Okay. All right, very good. Um, any other, um, Janet, is your hand still up or up again? Oh, no, sorry. Yep, okay, sorry. Got okay, sorry. Yep. Um, okay. Um, so let's... Um, uh, keep our eye on this outline as well. I think, um, uh, and we can sort of discuss as we go, talk, as Chris sort of presents what she's um, provided so far with regard to um, the the uh, purpose and intent section of um, um, sort of what, what uh, I, and I'd be interested in your thoughts, Chris, in terms of is, is the idea basically to go sort of step by step down this outline or are there sections that are, um, easier to write first and and others that are better to write once you're once you're done um uh the a bulk of the bylaw i think there are sections that are going to be easier and and that's why i started off with the purpose and intent the purpose and intent may not be an easy one to get through in terms of discussion but i thought it was a good ground um to to set uh, a base to set so that all members of the um, zoning bylaw, or excuse me, these uh, solar bylaw working group feel like we're moving in in a particular direction. I think applicability and definitions are going to be particularly easy. Um, general requirements are also going to be um, relatively easy. But when we get to particular requirements, dimensional requirements, um, submittals, um, design, I think that's where we're going to run into you know, differences of opinion and, um, you know, need to have a wider discussion. I encourage you to read um, the planning board minutes, which I asked Stephanie mm. to provide for you. I don't think it was in the packet, but it may be a resource. But the planning board had a really good discussion on February 16th of 2022. And we provided that um, set of minutes and between pages, I think it's pages two to five, um, the planning board really wrestled with a lot of the issues that came up and Janet had provided some information from um, Palmer and we had provided information from other cities and towns and the planning board kind of just had an open discussion on what kinds of things need to be um, considered mm -hmm. when 
we're writing the zoning bylaw. And some towns take a fairly restrictive view of um, of solar installations, and some are more um, flexible and lenient. And so I think you know we need to talk about that. But if you wanted to um, you know have a quick look at that discussion. I encourage you to read it. Is it in the resources folder, Stephanie? The February um, 16th. I'll have, to, I'll have to take a look, Chris. Yeah. I'm not sure that right. I put it in there, but I certainly will. OK. All right. It That'd would just be helpful, be helpful yeah. because it was a pretty thorough discussion. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, um, so I'll just slowly work through this. I had hoped to uh, do more for this um, meeting, but I got a, a curveball thrown at me by um, Ben Breger, who decided to go on to another job, and all of a sudden I, I had some <laughs> work to do that I wasn't <laughs> planning on. We yeah, wish Ben I, I well. Know. You're down. You're down a staff person. <laughs> we're down a staff person, yeah, and we yeah. are really going to miss Ben. Yeah. Um, so that's my excuse. But anyway, I did manage to get the purpose and intent um, started, and we can talk about that. Um, are there any more comments about the outline? Great. Okay. okay. Thanks, and thanks for um, considering that. Okay. So yeah, let's let's then go to um, the um, uh, section that you did draft on the intent, purpose, and intent. I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, if Stephanie can show that, that would be helpful. I'm, yeah, excellent. I'm horrible at sharing my screen. I fail every time. I think I was successful <laughs> once. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe it's because you're sitting in the lakes and mountains there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, Sorry, good, uh, there's good no Wi-Fi here, there. right? <laughs> I just have to go to the appropriate packet, so just bear with me one moment. Okay, I'm opening it up now. Okay, so um, what I did here was I looked at a number of different... Um, bylaws and Janet had put together some language um she she had started to write a draft so I I looked at what Janet had done I looked at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission I looked at Shutesbury I looked at Wellesley and a couple of other towns and I tried to you know put in a um as many of those um, as many of the things that other communities had thought were important in their purpose and intent section um but you know, this is a first draft, and I'm happy to rework it with your comments. Um, but I can I can start to read it. One of the things that I found was in the Cape Cod Commission um, guidelines, or I forget what they call it, but um, it's their effort to help cities and towns on Cape Cod to to put together zoning bylaws with regard to solar. Um, they did um, they did use the word promote, and I thought that mm -hmm. might raise some hackles here. But um, that was a word that was brought in. And I also noticed that in um, KP Law's analysis of the Tracer Lane um, decision that um, that the judge called uh, Waltham to task for being restrictive but not promoting solar um, energy production. And so I think that the, putting the word promote in here is, is a good idea. So in any event, um, the purpose and intent, the purpose of this bylaw is to promote and regulate the creation of new large scale ground mounted solar voltaic installations by providing standards for the placement, design, construction, operation, monitoring, modification, and removal of such installations. Does anyone want to comment on that first paragraph? Yeah. Um, I guess, oops, go ahead. Go ahead, Martha. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I think it's great. Uh, I thought you were really clever to put in the word promote just because of the KP Law's legal analysis. I mean, uh, you know, then it's in there. We have that for our protection and we can still do just the same things about deciding uh, where we might cite them and where we might not. Mm -hmm. I was just going to um, comment. I, I presume, um, if it's anything like regulatory language that I'm used to, these capitalized 
terms will be make their way into the definitions, mm -hmm. uh, as in the case of the large scale ground mounted solar PV mm -hmm. installations. I am I I was wondering though that um, um, does our bylaw and our charge, I guess, in this bylaw, I know it really is the focus is on ground mounted arrays. Um, um, is is there anything we we need to say in this bylaw or or deal in this bylaw that might be you know larger arrays that may not like over parking lots for example that um or maybe that's considered ground mounted if they're <laughs> stuck into the ground um, but is there any uh, uh, any categories of solar that we really need to touch on in this uh, bylaw? Yeah, I'm sorry. Could you say what did you mean by that? Like exempting it or including it by name uh like well it says um i mean the purpose of the bylaws to promote and reg regulate uh large-scale ground-mounted arrays i'm just wondering you know is there anything in our bylaw that needs to address other arrays i'm not suggesting necessarily residential but on over a large parking lot potentially um um uh i think i think larger buildings so i think that um you know, I think when we get to the definitions that will be defined and then um, it'll be like um, probably I would it's going to be like an acre or more is large mounted large. You know, that's it. Um, I don't think we should. So so it'll be anything that's over that. But later on, we can just exempt anything that's a canopy. You know, you know, we could later on say if it's a canopy system, um, it's exempt from any requirements, you know, then, then maybe well, we separate. still may want to. Um... I, I don't again, I'm not an expert on zoning, but yeah. I mean, in terms of the construct the the process of construction and making sure there's no runoff and everything from that construction area um during construction. I mean, there's yeah. still maybe parts of of uh, the bylaw that we would want to apply to that. Mm -hmm. I think that your charge was really to address the large scale ground mounted mm -hmm. solar arrays. And then you can decide what the definition of that is, and if that includes um, arrays that are over parking lots. So that's a discussion that you can have down the road when you're dealing with definitions and the regulations. Yeah, we could we could figure out. Oh, you know that that's a good point. That you know there might be more runoff, especially for an existing parking lot that may not have adequate stormwater controls to begin with because they're kind of old. That might be a good thing to you know include too. So I, I think you know once we get into the weeds, we're going to really be in the weeds, um, <laughs> or the or the brambles really probably because it's more tangled. So should we move okay. on to the next paragraph? Okay. Um, this is one that I think I took from Janet's draft. The town of Amherst recognizes the urgent need to convert to non-carbon energy sources to promote solar energy development, as well as the need to sequester carbon to slow and reverse climate change. Mm -hmm. I may have changed a few words, but um, mm -hmm. that's important to put in the front that you know we we have this intention that we know that we have to provide um, an opportunity to convert to non-carbon energy sources. Any comments? Looks good. Okay, this bylaw aims to balance multiple needs and there may be other needs, but these are ones that you know yeah. I was able to develop for now. Um, the need for alternative forms of energy generation and storage to meet climate action goals. The need to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the town of Amherst and the region. Mm -hmm. The need to protect the natural environment and minimize impacts on scenic, natural, and cultural resources. The need to provide adequate financial assurance for the eventual decommission of such installations. <clears throat> and the need to recognize the rights of landowners to use their land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any comments on that? Um, oh. Yeah, let's go, we'll go with Dan. Yeah, just um, uh, the first bullet there, um, I'm proposing that we replace um, alternative with um, non-carbon forms of energy generation. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thanks. Yep. I'm sorry, uh, Martha. <laughs> Uh, yes, in the, the third billet, the need to protect the natural environment, et cetera, I, I would like to propose inserting the one phrase so that it reads the need to protect the natural environment, provide for carbon sequestration, and minimize impacts on solar natural cultural resources. There might be another word besides provide because this is a bylaw that deals with solar. So it might be um, and, some other word because we're and, not going to be providing. Okay. Um, we will be assuring the, you know, continuation of or protection mm -hmm. of or something like or that. Protect, maybe protect. Is that a good protect word? Protect sources of carbon sequestration or something like that. Yeah. But again, I, I just think that needs to be emphasized just because we have to balance the two, the two sides of the equation. Of... Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, otherwise looks great to me. Great, um, I think Janet and then um, Bob. So I think, you know, I think about this, um, this section as um, potentially inoculating Amherst from lawsuits. And so, um, and I think, I think, we, you know, as we go down the road and decide like, yes, no, maybe, you know, in terms of sites or where we want to prefer to see solar, we'll come back to this and revise it. Um, so I'm worried about, you know, the need to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the town of Amherst and the region. It's like the general justification for zoning. And I think, what I was trying to do in my much more wordy preamble <laughs> was to, to make the connection between those very general terms and what the bylaw is regulating. So, you know, the health of Amherst is, you know, like, so, you know, it doesn't have to happen in this, you know, session, but I think, you know, promoting the health and safety and welfare of the people of Amherst would be making sure we had, you know, you know, you know, carbon sequestration makes it warmer, makes it cooler. It, you know, it, it, you know, so it's like, you know, how are we going to protect the health? Well, we're going to provide clean air, cooler temperatures, we're removing carbon, you know, so that's healthier and safer that we don't have, you know, terrible storms killing people and stuff like that. So I'm not opposed to this general phrase, but I think in the rest of the preamble, we have to be more specific about how we get to, how what's the link between our regulations and that those general phrases and so maybe we can do a little work in the next one saying instead of saying you know the, to protect the natural environment which you know a farm isn't a natural environment and our forests kind of you could argue aren't but i would say to need to protect the natural environment minis, minis, minimize impacts on scenic forest agricultural you know, historic, I would maybe say more clearly what you're trying to protect or how these resources promote health and safety. So, um, so I had, I was adding words more specific, like forests, wetlands, agricultural lands, you know, or, you know, ag agricultural soils, because some of it may not be farmed yet, you know, so I think, you know, as we decide where we're protecting and why, I think we're going to need to put in more clearly the connection between what we're trying to protect and how that ties into general, you know, health, safety, welfare, you know, things like that. Does that make sense? Do you want to send me some language? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. I, guess I would just maybe, and I think, yeah, sending language and then we can review that. I, I, I don't want to push back, but I just want to, um, you know, I think maybe some of that get, this is a preamble. I don't know if we want to get into specifics of of um, property types and so forth. Uh, but I'm also, um, the, the word protect, is, it seems a little bit, um, I think we want to um, address these issues, but I don't know if protection is the right word. I mean, if we want to 
protect this for the purpose of uh, reducing climate change, then you know that's sort of that's the balance we need to strike. We want to protect the forest for sequestration, but we also want to promote solar because that itself is going to reduce um, uh, climate change. Um, and so I, I don't want uh, protection sounds to me a little bit more a little bit um, at, at this point of the bylaw, at least. Um, which is sort of more general and, and uh, sort of talking about trade-offs seems so, to me a little bit more prescriptive in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, sort of regulating uh, lands that can and can't be used. So the, I think the reason to use language like that or be very specific is, you know, it's, it's like when you read the Tracer Lane decision, you know, they were kind of the, the courts like, Hey, yeah, towns can, you know, regulate zoning to protect the qualities of, you know, their, the beauty and the quality, you know, of a residential neighborhood. And then they never, you know, and, but they can't prohibit everything. So that's a, a funny decision. And so the question is, what they didn't do is say, okay, you know, Waltham doesn't want all these commercial trucks driving through residential neighborhoods, right? Because obviously that's kind of crappy if you live in a quiet neighborhood and, you know, industrial trucks are going away. Like they never did that extra piece. And if they did that extra piece, they might've said, well, that's a reasonable regulation. But I think they were so aghast at how restrictive it was. They just kind of never went to the analysis. And so my thought is, if we're clear, you know, it's it's no secret that Amherst likes to protect agricultural lands, right? We're the book in the plow. It's on our you know flag. And so we leave that in there. We, we're very specific about it. So later on, we can, our regulations that tie back into that, which might be, you know, whatever, whatever we decide. So I think that this is like an inoculation paragraph and not to, I think you need to be a little specific. Of course, we want to protect our, far, you know, our forests. Um, and it's not just because they sequester carbon, they have other things. So then the question is, how do we want to do that? How do we want to promote solar? How do we balance those interests? And the courts will say, well, hey, they had like five goals. And this is how they balanced it. And that's great because they, they, there's a connection between their balancing act, their regulations, their goals. They told us what it was. And so do you know what I mean? Like, does that make, I don't know if it makes sense. It's kind of like, like legal argument, like how do you do it? But I think, um, you know, it's hard to argue against protecting the environment, but I think you need to be more spe specific in saying, how are you doing it? And we don't know what the rest of the bylaw is going to say, but we're trying to do this saying to the court, here's what we're looking at. We're balancing all these interests. We want to promote solar. We want to sequester carbon. We want to have farmland. We want to have pretty neighborhoods. Like in Amherst, we want a lot of different things. And here's how they did it. And they're fine. I mean, I think a good purpose and intent will give us something really solid to let us make our choices later. Um, Anyway, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, so I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just a little bit concerned about being overly restrictive in our preamble before we get into the into the the the, the, the bylaw itself. Yeah, I don't think it limits us. It just frees us from you know it it doesn't limit us from anything later. I think. Well, it could it it, it may have the opposite effect of of people. Uh, you know, potential lawsuits saying, you know, this this by this portion of the bylaw down in the depths of the bylaw violates your um, the 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 um, preamble, <laughs> the language and the purpose of intent. Yeah. Uh, unless we strike that, you know, you know, uh, strike the balance properly um, in this in this purpose of intent section. Uh, but go, yeah. go ahead, Chris. And then, and then Martha, sorry. Yep. Oh, I'm just noticing in the purpose of the by of the zoning bylaw in general, it uses the word promote. The bylaw is enacted pursuant to the uh, Chapter 40A in general law of the general laws for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare mm -hmm. of the people of the town of Amherst, and to encourage the most okay. appropriate use of land throughout the town. So we could use the word promote the health, safety, and welfare of the people. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And promote the natural environment. Yeah. yeah. And promote the natural environment. Yeah. Protection of, or promote um, the, the yeah. some word that means, you know, yeah. ongoing life yeah. of. <laughs> Positive is always good. Preserve. 
<laughs> for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. So I, I also wanted okay. to say that um, with regard to what Janet was, the point that she was trying to make, mm -hmm. I think that's an important point because I remember when we were discussing inclusionary zoning, we needed to show that, um, or this was a long time ago, but we need, we felt we needed to show that there was a connection between requiring this provision of affordable units and the need for affordable units in our area. There were, and, mm -hmm. and they used the word nexus, the mm -hmm. nexus between the requirement to build affordable units and the fact that we needed affordable units. So that's kind of a thought that I will keep in my mind as I go through this. Um, are we done with this third paragraph? Uh, well, Martha might have had one more uh, okay, I'm sorry. comment. Yeah. So I, I just suggest that maybe that uh, Chris and Janet uh, polish the wording a little bit, and then we recognize that after the most of the bylaw gets written, we'll probably want to go go back and yeah. polish sure, back. a little yeah. more. Uh, yeah. But I think that overall, uh, Chris, that this is great, and you're including you know, most everything we've talked about. So I think that's good. And and I agree that agriculture, specifying agriculture will be good. And in fact, the CARP report also uh, has words about preserving the agricultural land too. So thank you. And just wanted to comment, preserving and protecting doesn't mean that it's completely preserved and protected. It just means mm -hmm. to the extent that you're able to do that, that's one of your goals. It doesn't mean you're not going to touch agricultural mm -hmm. land or forest land, but the um, when you do touch it, you are going to have in the thought that you want to uh, preserve and promote it. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is, um, this bylaw strives to regulate solar facilities and energy storage facilities in order to encourage solar installations to be installed on built and previously disturbed environment environments to the extent possible and to minimize negative impacts on areas such as forests and agricultural lands. Any comments on that? I, I had two um, comments, I guess, on that or, or um, um, proposals, I guess, for some word changes. One is, is um, to the extent possible seems a little bit um, it could use a little bit more to, um, qualification, I guess. Uh, so I was going to offer um, to the extent technically and economically reasonable uh, in terms of encouraging, you know, our principles to encourage encourage um, solar installations on the built environment and previously disturbed environments mm -hmm. to the extent technically and economically reasonable or feasible, I guess would be fine. Feasible. Okay. Um, and then... Um, and then, uh, and then it says, and to minimize negative impacts. Um, I think minimize, minimize st struck me as being um, uh, a little strong maybe there in terms of um, uh, minimize may not allow for some trade-offs, uh, but to, uh, I suggested, and to control negative impacts of areas such as forest and agricultural lands. Yep, okay. Uh, Martha? Hi. Yes, I guess I would uh, respectfully question the words of putting in like uh, economically feasible because I think everyone has different definitions of what's economically feasible. I wonder if we could just say to the extent feasible without any uh, specifics or... I think you might get rid of the problem by just dropping the phrase. <laughs> I mean, you're just, you're encouraging solar installations to be installed on built-in environments, right? You know, it's not required, um, you know. Do you know what I mean? You know, the economics will be, you know, kind of flesh out on this thing. Um, yeah, and strives to regulate mm -hmm. and to encourage doesn't imply that it's, you know, a ham-fisted way of doing it. It's mm -hmm. the intent is to try to do this. Yeah. Um, 
if I actually had another comment. I don't well, know. Martha, did you have anything else? Sorry. Was uh, that no, th no, th no, thanks. That was that was okay. my comment. Uh, okay, great. Was, yep. and and I, I'm fine with striking the phrase, actually, just okay. my own, my own two cents. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, Janet. I, I don't like the phrase previously disturbed environments, although I can't think, I'd love to think of a different substitute maybe later. I mean, we live in a place that people have been um, in for thousands of years and colonized since the 1600s. And so I would be hard pressed to find any inch of Amherst that hasn't been touched in some way. And so I think what you're sort of saying is like brown fields or that mine up in the Holy X or something like that. I mean, I think that's what you mean, but you know, a farm is a disturbed environment. My front yard is, you know, which you can have by the way, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I, there's something about that that just seems too vague to me. And I, I'd love to think of a more narrow definition to capture more of what we're trying to say, but I can't think of it right now. Great. All right. What about like managed environments? Yeah, it's 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 hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you, yeah, that you could even like, be though the the Native Americans were managing the forests. The, so, the beavers are at this point. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I I get the point, and yeah, I'm try to think of something yeah. that um, yeah. makes sense. You kind of like crummy lands that we've messed up and don't, aren't really using well, you know. <laughs> you Degraded. That's a word that um, the Conservation degraded. Commission, the wetlands bylaw uses. Degraded landscape. Degraded. Oh. I was just about to raise my hand to make that suggestion. Okay. okay. All right, great. All right. Next, uh, anything else on that one? Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, next paragraph. This bylaw balances the critical goal of increased energy, increased solar energy production with reasonable regulations, thus serving to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of Amherst residents. I changed that word on the fly. What do you think? Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good. Okay. Um, next paragraph. This bylaw encourages the use of solar energy systems and protects solar access consistent with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 9B, Solar Access 18, and Green Communities Act, Mass General Law, Chapter 25A, Section 10. These things were taken, this paragraph was taken from the um, Cape Cod um, mm -hmm. model bylaw. And um, Chapter 40A, Section 9B deals with, um, and this is something that I hadn't thought about before, um, protecting the solar um, energy system from encroachment so that um, something doesn't come along and get in the way of the solar rays getting to the solar um, um, panels. Yeah. And so that's something that we may want to include. Um, and I don't know exactly how we will include that, but I think it's, you know, um, important to think about that. And then sure. the Green Communities Act is, um, you know, putting out there that we have a, um, we, Anerst is a green community, and I'm sure Stephanie can talk about that in a better uh, more informed way than I can, but um, you know, it certainly encourages cities and towns to have uh, solar energy as one of um, one of the things that we would host. So, what do you think about that? I would be hesitant to, to agree, if, having no idea what these chapters say, although they all sound good. <laughs> so, I, I'd like to know a little bit more about them. So. You could, um, they're pretty easy to find if you go online yeah. and just read those uh, sections, you'll have a sense of what they're all about. Okay. So I encourage you to do that. And we can talk about that next time. 
And let me let's just uh, welcome Laura to the to, to the group. Uh, thanks for getting on. Hope your daughter's doing better. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, then the next paragraph. This bylaw is also consistent with the Amherst Master Plan, the Open Space and Recreation Plan, and the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan. And I think that's um, sort of uh, um, a little bit of a response to the what Janet brought up before about having that nexus between what we're um, what we're requiring and you know what we've already said that we intend to do. So having this in here is important. And there may be other plans that we have out there that I didn't think about um, that we also want to list here. Mm -hmm. Okay, any comments about that? Um, so I, I, I haven't read the um, Climate Adaptation and Resilience Plan. Um, so I... I you know, I, I know the first two, have they all three been adopted by um, town meeting or town council or? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll read the last one. I wondered if you wanted to put the state, state um, climate, I don't, I always get the name wrong, their climate energy and climate action plan in too. Um, but then I, you know, I think people should, before we agree to it, know what these plans say. <laughs> like we have a summary from Martha on that. And then um, I've read the master plan 5 billion times and then the open space plan, but not the other one. So I'd like to read those. Okay. So everybody Great. has mm -hmm. homework to do there, right? Yeah, I'm just, uh, it may be Chris, you can enlighten us. I mean, would it, the, these these the 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 plans you cited are all sort of under our control in in Amherst as opposed mm -hmm. to the state one which is um not under our, our control uh, we may be controlled by it I guess so is it would it be a, appropriate or inappropriate or could be either way uh to include that um it's consistent with some plan that's out there that we don't necessarily have control over Maybe and, and can change to... over time we might want to refer to it rather than saying it's consistent because we mm -hmm. hope that it will be consistent, but yeah. we're not sure. So, great, um, Martha, yeah. and then we'll that move was, on. Uh, I was I was going to agree. I was going to say from what I learned from a class that I took that was kind of the rule is that our zoning is is sort of required to be consistent with our town's master plan and you know any other plans that our town government has um, you know, approved and so on, and agree with you that since the state plan is subject to change and not under our control, we should probably not include it in this language, so. But it, I think it is worth referring to yeah. somehow. I just have yeah. to figure out how to do that. Yeah. But, okay. I may, may also, um, I'm just thinking whether it goes earlier just to you know, say that we're, you know, th this, the purpose of intent also is to be uh, supportive of the Commonwealth's clean energy and climate plan as well. Yep. I like the positive language. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice. I'm always, yeah. Okay, uh, the last one is kind of a boilerplate that we usually put in um, sections that we're adding just to make sure that, you know, they don't conflict with other sections of the bylaw. So the provisions set forth in this section shall take precedence over all other less restrictive sections of the zoning bylaw and the regulation of large scale ground mounted solar voltaic installations. And we've done this recently with our flood mapping um, bylaw and other things. So what do you think about that? When when I read this, oh go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Dan. Whoops. Yeah, I just want to make sure I understand exactly what that means. So essentially what are we saying that if the zoning bylaw is more restrictive regarding a specific regulation, then that takes precedent. If it's less restrictive, then this bylaw takes precedent. 
I think if there's something in the bylaw that's more restrictive, it's up to the building commissioner to determine whether it applies or not. But what we're saying is um, that things that are less restrictive uh, do not rule. For instance, um, setbacks. So if you wanted to have mm -hmm. a setback of 100 feet for a solar array, that could potentially be in conflict with a less restrictive um, dimensional regulation in table three of section six, mm -hmm. which says you only need to have a 25 foot setback. So mm -hmm. you wanna be able to um, you know, put restrictions on the solar array that makes sense for this solar array and not have to fall back to what the dimensional requirements say in another mm -hmm. section. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Great. Uh, sorry, Jan. Is that a hand hand up again? Yeah. I was. This is kind of. Um, I would like to know where the where they bump against each other, and that I think that will come up as we yeah. you know look at different types of provisions. So, you know, you know, the setback is sort of easy because we have a good chart on setbacks in different zoning districts. But I, the the zoning bylaw is really complicated, and I wonder. You know, there might get we might have conflicts that we don't perceive, you know, sort of in a, you know, open space, you know, purred and, you know, whatever those things like that just kind of come up. And so I, I wonder if we can just sort of if Chris could just keep that in mind, like, oh, this might be in conflict um, and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Great. And welcome, Laura, to the conversation. Hey. Yep. Um, sorry, Emily and Christine. Um, I think this is a. Uh, I think this is really balanced language. Um, one of the questions I have is um, going back a little bit, I apologize. That first piece about um, encouraging solar on previously you know, disturbed environments, I think that's really good. Um, I'm wondering if we, we also, if this is the time or if we can put it in a parking lot for later to discuss the ability to you know, add some sort of financial incentives for encouraging that as well. Because if we said as a commission that we really love the idea of solar on, um, you know, cap landfills or any sort of contaminated sites, um, or even like working canopies, it's more, it's it's meaningfully more expensive to, to build on those, um, uh, you know, those mm -hmm. plots of land as opposed to greenfield. So, um, I would love, I mean, if, if it's, I, I know that originally I, the question was brought up a few meetings ago as to whether or not we could provide some sort of incentive and um, just want to make sure we're talking about that. And and just maybe expand a little bit, Laura, if, if, if you're so willing, I'd be interested. I mean, obviously the, this, the state incentives are, are, you know, provide different incentives and, and more incentive to do it on a landfill, for example, or a parking lot. Um, are you suggesting? Um, so there's a re yeah, there's a reason why you still don't see a lot of that, Dwayne, um, because the state incentives, um, not even in Massachusetts, you know, across the board, are typically not valuable enough to really encourage people. Because let's let's take a, a cap landfill. There are a few solar developers that specialize in landfills because it's a different um, trade. You know, it's similar, but you have to make sure they're ballasted. You have to monitor, you know, uh, methane. You know, there's a lot of things that go with it, um, as opposed to just leaving it as a cap landfill. So, um, in my experience, it's been um, a lot of developers are like, it's not, it's not worth it. You know, it just, it's too expensive, too much legal. Um, it's not as straightforward as, as a building on a on a on a greenfield site. So. Um, Anyways, I can, and I can provide, not right now, but if it's helpful for the group, I can start to reach out to the developers I know that really focus on those types of sites and figure out like, you know, what would make you want to come to Amherst and develop here? Like, what are the financial incentives that, you know, for example, New Jersey provides lots of incentives to develop on these sites. In fact, they say, um, we don't want solar on greenfields, period, hard stop as a state. And that's because New Jersey has limited greenfields. So they provide hefty incentives for this, this sort of development. Um, and as a result, they've received, 
you know, all their applications on these types of sites. So anyways, and, and then furthermore, you know, just to, I don't think we need to talk about this necessarily here, but um, there's an equity component to this too. Um, the state provides additional incentives if you have, you know, the power is produced from a solar farm, let's call it community solar, you get additional incentives for low income subscribers to make it more equitable. But similarly, oftentimes the juice isn't worth the squeeze. So they go for like the large municipal takers or UMass or whatever that is because of the credit worthiness here. Um, so just there's a lot of things to consider as a group. Yep. Okay, great. And we did talk a little bit about that earlier, I think, before you got on with regard to whether these in, these extra incentives might might not necessarily fit in a, in a zoning bylaw, but there may be some recommendations we come up with um, that would go into other bylaws or in front of the town council. Yeah, I mean, I think, in a, and I'll let Christine, sorry, I know she has her hand up patiently, but I think it would be like the ideal scenario, and I think almost everyone on this call from various opinions would agree that if you could make it work on a previously disturbed site, that's the best. Um, so anyways. Great, thank you. Yep, Chris. So I just wanted to note that um, Amherst did put through a piece of legislation um, with the general counsel uh, of the state about, um, or the general court, excuse me, um, having to do with inclusionary zoning and um, building affordable units. And it was um, what they call a home rule petition, mm -hmm. um, but we did get it passed and it, allows developers of affordable units to get um, a tax break over a period of 10 years um, if they build more than 10 units of affordable housing at the state level. Um, so that's something that could be considered, but I don't really understand how these facilities are taxed in Massachusetts. And I know I, I hear about pilots, um, so maybe that's something that Laura could inform us about, you know, in the future about how how are these facilities taxed? Do they actually pay? Um, do they pay real estate tax? Do they pay tax on the equipment that they have on the site? Yes. Or do they negotiate a pilot with the municipality mm -hmm. as opposed to having a tax? So that would be something to think about. Yeah. I can put together some sort of presentation on that for a later date, as mm -hmm. well as something on landfills too, on brownfields. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, awesome. Okay. Um, that gets us to the end. Uh, and thank you, Chris, uh, really. Uh, this was fantastic to create this language and and um, uh, have the opportunity to go through it and, and um, uh, and start start this whole process off, um, and and really appreciate the thinking and work that went into this, and and the great draft that you start you you came out with, as uh, as was mentioned. So in my mind, well balanced as well. Um, any any other thoughts or comments? Um, what I want to do is, is sort of discuss how we're going to go through this process each and every time that uh, Chris comes up with a new draft of a new new section or parts of a section. Um, I did want to offer one more thought on this preamble, um, or or what are we calling a purpose of an, an intent? Um, and I did. Um, I, I I thought we might add, or, or or at least put out there to add one more um purpose and, and intent uh just to clarify our um wanting to um encourage solar development in in ways that are uh supports our um dedication to equity and inclusion and 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 justice issues in town um in a vague but specific way um uh, because you know there is there is concern or it could be concern about um, citing solar that is uh, in ways that is uh, may not be as just and equitable as uh, as as could be 
uh, or meeting some of those principles, uh, both in terms of impacts and the opportunities for solar, uh, solar um, uh, beneficial impacts. Um, so I I did um, not in 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 as nice language as Chris is capable of doing, but I did um, draft a a, 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 couple, a sentence I guess similar to that could fit into in between one of these other paragraphs um, that I can just throw out there and and read and see if people think it makes sense to include in this intent and purpose section or not. Um, and it says uh, that this bylaw strives to encourage and regulate solar facilities and energy storage facilities in a manner that supports the equity and justice, supports the equity and justice of impacts and opportunities across all sectors of Amherst residences, residents and businesses with particular concern of our low income and marginalized communities. Um, I don't, I didn't see anything else in here that sort of Obviously, there there's language about um, the the um, wealth and and and, and uh, or not the wealth, but the uh, the um, um, benefit uh, or the general safety safety and welfare of the people, uh, but nothing specific with regard to uh, maintaining a focus on on equitable distribution of impacts and um, opportunities. Um, Laura. And then we'll go with Janet, who I think was trying to speak. Sure. Janet, yeah, go ahead. Go first. It's fine. I was just, could you read it again? Because I'm, I'm and I I'm not saying I, I, I nailed it as well as Chris. No, I just I kind of I, I do better reading stuff than hearing it. So I just Yeah, and I I I'd love to put it in the chat, but I can't. So um uh but I could I could share my screen if that's easier. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Um uh, all right, so do you see this? It's the red thing here. Can you see that? Yeah, okay, so um, this bylaw strives to encourage and regulate solar facilities and energy storage facilities in a manner that supports the equity and justice of impacts and opportunities across all sectors of Amherst residents and businesses with particular concern on our low income and marginalized communities. Can you send that to everyone? Or can you send yeah, it to I'll, me? I'll anyway? send it to you, Chris, and, yeah. and then you can um, can work on it. Yep. But but any any thoughts about whether yeah. this is appropriate in in by in a in this no it's a great idea. Yeah. I think um yep. so just one thing that I think about is in all of this stuff, like how are we going to measure that? Because I feel like this this kind of language is included frequently just across the board with private and public entities. And one thing I do know about solar um, and the way, so this concept of community solar is, um, you know, massive in New York and Massachusetts. And basically what it does is, you know, if you go back in time, like six years ago, almost all solar plants that were built the power off taker, the entity that's purchasing the power was like a large credit worthy entity. And these still exist like a, you know, Amazon, a, a college, whatever that might be. And what community solar did, it was the concept was to sort of democratize solar and make it more equitable. It allows in Massachusetts, as I mentioned before, half of the power to go to consumers. Meaning that as long as you pay your own electric bill, you can participate at a savings. And it's very popular. It was, you know, Massachusetts was one of the leaders in this space. Um, and you have this ability to offer, so in order to make it more equitable, what you can't do, or like we encourage facilities that would do things like not require FICO scores for participation. We know that FICO scores is, are normally for the wealthy and, you know, uh, you know, a different subset. Um, but I, I think like the more we can include um, measurable, you know, like like specifics, like, you know, no credit requirements, um, uh, things like that. And then furthermore, like incent that because also on the back end, just having done this so many times, those types of projects are more difficult to um, get financed. 
because a lot of the typical financing, like a lot of the owners, not all of them, but many of them will still look at low income subscribers and say, whoa, way too risky. Um, they're going to drop, they're going to cancel, you know, even though there's really no data to support that. Um, so anyways, that's, that's my two cents. Yeah, and I guess I was, you know, it, it had that in mind in terms of both the uh, benefit, the economic benefits accruing, um, or, you know, ha having our eyes open to sort of having those benefits accrue um, to um, to those that need and, and to reduce some of those barriers, um, as well as, uh, you know, being concerned with uh, potential impacts of, of siting solar um, in areas that are, um, you know, disproportionately impacting uh, uh, lands and so forth associated with um, more of our more marginalized communities. I, I might want to, I might, I think maybe you can put the last part of the second part of that sentence under the needs, like the, you know, the, the need to um, ensure that the equity and you know, the, the impact need to ensure the impacts and opportunities, um, you know, are across all sectors of Amherst with particular concern on low income and marginalized communities. I think that might be, I like this idea. I think it's really, really a strong one. But I wonder if you can put it into our our bullet list. Oh, in the in in this bullet list here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a great. It's great. Yeah. I really. I okay. Like well, it. why don't I why don't I send send the language on to Chris and 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 uh, she can um, work on it and 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 sort of uh, um, put it in as a as she thinks most appropriate in in the in the section. Great. Okay. Um, this is great. Any, any, before we move on, um, any last thoughts about the great um, work and, and draft that Chris provided and, and went over at, um, uh, um, just now? Great. Okay. Um, let me, um, I thought this 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 worked out better than I thought, <laughs> Chris. Uh, in terms of because uh, I didn't, you know, when I'm scratching my head in terms of like, okay, how you're going to draft these things, and then how are we as a as a working group um, collectively in real time um, uh, provide feedback, edits, redlining, uh, and so forth, and and you know, to some extent, maybe this section is is not a a uh, a, a great example of what's to come forward because there's going to be a lot of that's coming forward in some sections that are really going to be like um we got to research we got to deliberate um you know if it's 100 feet or 75 feet or whatever um we got to sort of um work work through that and i think to some extent um want to see drafts and and not respond sort of immediately but have time to think about them uh do some research and then and then come together with some discussion and consensus feedback. So I was just gonna ask in this sort of next section of, of, uh, of just some discussion here is, is uh, to discuss how we as a working group um, want to sort of work with Chris in this procedure here um, where um, she and her staff are gonna be drafting, uh, drafting these, these sections or parts of sections um, as we go forward providing them to us um, for review um, and, and feedback and, uh, uh, and to some extent deliberation uh, amongst ourselves. And um, um, I'm just wanna, wanna sort of have a sense of how, what people think in terms of the, the process uh, that we should sort of plan on uh, for these meetings um, and whether this, this process works okay uh, we get, you know, in this case, we we received the draft language a, a few days ahead of the meeting. Uh, we went over it in real time, uh, provide some feedback, um, and and uh, had some discussion, uh, and and gave Chris uh, pretty much the feedback she needed to then do a, an iteration of a of a next draft 
Um, especially with this section, as we mentioned, uh, there'll be sort of an iteration periodically, or at least when we're done, to circle back on it to see if <laughs> see if there's uh, if it still rings rings true and solid. Um, but um, uh, I'm wondering whether this if this is a process that will continue to work, um, or whether uh, we should think more about Chris providing these things uh, uh, before before a meeting, talking about it uh, and presenting it to us as a group during the meeting, maybe have some initial conversation, uh, but then have some formalized mechanism where we all uh, take some time in the in the two weeks till the next meeting to review, do some uh, do some editing, redlining, uh, to some extent, sharing, uh, coordinate, coordinating that all together, and then having a um, um, a, a, a conversation, a discussion item with Chris the following meeting to review um, our um, our deliver our our um, comments and and suggestions on on the draft, uh, and and engage amongst ourselves and with with Chris and Stephanie. On some deliberation um, on on uh, specifics in the in the draft that need to be um, deliberated on, uh, or items that we, we we can deliberate on, but recognize that we need to um, research a bit more and and uh, and have some some additional feedback. Uh, but I want to I want to get a sense of how from the group how people want to work through this, um, uh, and maybe I'm making it more complicated than it needs to be. Um, but I'm interested in 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 thoughts here. Um, let me go with you first, Chris, uh, and then we'll go with Martha. I just wanted to say that I think it would be cumbersome for me to, and I'm not sure if this mm -hmm. way you had in mind at all, but I just wanted to say it would be cumbersome for me to receive multiple redlined versions of this and then try to meld them together. So if you all want to you know redline your copy of it and bring it to a meeting and then have a discussion among yourselves as to whether you will accept this particular edit or not that makes more sense to me because i don't want to be in a position of having to choose you know janet's edit versus martha's edit versus bob's edit right so just wanted to put that out there thanks great and and uh, yeah and and thank you um Chris, for that, and and that was not my intent there at all. Uh, the idea in my mind was to, um, you know, based on the rules of the open meeting law, uh, if if people, to the extent people had any comments or red lines on the draft, um, that would go. Uh, there would be I, I, that would go that would go to to me and Stephanie. Uh, I guess it could include you, Chris, as well, but wouldn't ask you or Stephanie to. Uh, um uh try to merge all these things together i would take that role uh and try to merge these things together uh into a single document maybe with if people commented on the same thing and had different versions i could have sort of multi versions that we have to go have to review and consider uh but that that we that we would do as a group um at the next meeting um and then have a singular um red line version to provide to you chris um, okay, uh, Martha, and then yeah, I think it, I think it's just going to depend on the section. I mean, I think Chris and our staff are the experts, and you know, uh, like we did today, you know, Chris, next time you bring your next section that you folks have ready, and hopefully we could get it a, a few days in advance. I think I didn't get this till yesterday, but it was short. Uh, and then we have an initial discussion. And if everybody has general agreement, well, you know, then mm -hmm. we do like we did today. And Chris just, you know, does a little polishing. If it turns out we get, you know, have some serious concerns, then we go with your step two, Dwayne, where we then all go off and think about it. Maybe in that case, Dwayne, we might send our comments to you before the meeting so you could organize them a little yeah. bit and then have a second discussion. So I think it just depends on the complexity. And maybe Chris, if there are some sections where you read it down and then when you send your draft, you say, here are the three things that I would particularly like comments on and you know, make it 
real specific, right? So okay. I think I think it'll go well. Okay, and I like that I'll simplification. Just, you know, try for the short version first, and then if we see there's a section that's controversial, then go for the longer procedure. Good. All right, great. Uh, Janet, yep, there you are. You're muted. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm popping in and I, was, I have a dog issue. Um, I I think that, you know, the process we, we were talking about and what we just did is a great process. I just think we're way ahead of our work plan and where we we can't, I don't, you know, you know, I, I just don't understand like that we're doing this now and making decisions now when we haven't done the community survey. We, we there's all this information about sites and, um, the community values, you know, if people are like, you know, I love solar, put it up to the street, you know, <laughs> then that, that that affects the setbacks issue. Um, so I think that we could do this process pretty quickly, starting in January, which I think was the kind of the work plan and work because work through this stuff um, as a group. And you know, Chris bringing several sections to each um, thing. I think that's the hard nitty gritty work that will come later, and we'll get better at it. But I think until we know what the community wants and what the assessment is and, you know, where we can have solar. So we don't have to argue over something that maybe, you know, like, you know, we could argue over slopes, but what do I need to know more information about slopes to actually say something, you know, what a slope should be. And so if we don't know what other problems towns have had in good thing, then how do we know what we're writing? So I, I feel like I think we could do a good kind of group workshop process and we can do that January, February, March and in be great shape. But I think if we start it now, we're making decisions in advance of the information from the assessment. Also it's a background inf information on what we're, you know, our town and solar and, you know, forests and all those good things and way ahead of what the community values are. And that's kind of our job is to take community values, figure out the priority map and figure out the bylaw. And I feel like you know, the cart is way before the horse right now. Great. Just, sorry, um, sorry. Yep. Lost my yep. Thank you. Um, Stephanie, and then we'll go with Laura. Yeah. Stephanie, did you have your hand up? I'm so busy muting everybody so that we don't just start talking and I muted myself too. <laughs> um, what I was saying was that um, to Janet's point, I, I absolutely hear you, Janet, but I think what's really helpful for people is that you give them something to react to. So if you give them a draft where people can say, well, um, I, you know, I, I sort of agree with this piece, but I don't agree with that piece. Um, so giving people something to work from rather than waiting, because I think you might get bogged down more if you if you wait further down the road. I think you want to be developing this thing and have something to give to share. I know that, you know, the ECAC will be waiting to receive a draft copy at some point for their input on what you all have discussed and talked about. So, um, you know, and I don't think the community values piece is going to be fully um, thrust upon you all. I think the town council will certainly, I think at some point, take a look at it and um, have their thoughts about some of that too. So um, I don't think it's solely on all of you to determine what the community values are. Great, and Laura? You know, um, I was gonna echo um, to a certain extent what Stephanie said in that, um, I think it's always good to have a draft, even if we end up modifying it. I mean, I think the expectation is we are definitely going to be modifying the language based on, you know, the community survey and so forth. But in any sort of, um, I've had the experience of not leading focus groups, but being side by side with um, third parties that do lead focus groups and sort of observing via that glass. And in every single focus group, they ask questions, but then they do have people react to language um just to you know uh get their responses so um and i also love the idea personally of of having some draft language in place so that come january in 2023 we're not all scrambling to put something new together we're, we're overachievers i like it get ahead of it <laughs> yeah uh, and i think there's a i mean just i think there's a 
there's two steps is of drafting and then deliberating on on uh, on key decisions uh, that I think will it'd be helpful to have some some drafting so people you know if we have a range of setbacks for example uh, that we need to hone in on that's something we can try to get some uh, some feedback uh, feedback from um, I don't think in my mind the drafting I just like the idea of having this all organized and fairly well drafted out, even though there may be a lot of yellow highlights or whatever showing uh, specific areas that we need to go back and and uh, um, come to some consensus on based on further uh, research, community um, perspectives, uh, and so forth uh, on on the, some of the specifications that we ultimately will need to come up with. Um, Chris. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things. One is that I think that some of um, I'm, I'm imagining that many of the things that Janet is concerned about are things that don't need to be filled in immediately. Yeah. Those are things that we can leave blanks for setbacks or, you know, how much of a forest we're going to allow to be cut or how big something could be in a prime agricultural land. Um, but getting the structure of this thing uh, down on paper, I think, is really important because um, it's a big job. And, you know, Janet knows how the planning board has labored over zoning amendments for months and, you know, even then has a hard time coming to a conclusion about them. And what happens in my world is that things come at us out of the blue, like the solar moratorium came at us out of the blue about two years ago. Was it two years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, that's something that we ended up spending a lot of time on staff here. And you never know when something like that is going to come. And so putting this off until January means that it could be, you know, on a collision course with some other thing that the town council thinks the planning department absolutely needs to work on. And then we won't have enough time to do it. So putting together the structure and the framework now and getting that organized, I think is really important, to, at least to start. And then uh, filling in the details of it as we move along, once we learn what the community uh, values are and what the community input is going to be, those are things that we can um, fit in and edit. And, and that's that's my opinion. Great, thanks. Okay, um, Jenna, one last thing and then I wanna move on because uh, so, time's limited and I, I have a hard stop at 1.30 today. Yeah. So I actually think if that's, if I mean, I thought under the work plan that you would be doing that, Chris, like putting together the, the bones and the, and like a, a draft or, and then in the, in the winter, we would start having collected all the information from the solar assessment and heard the community and figured out, okay, this is where people want it. And then we were going to go section by section and do that. So I think that would, instead of doing that and then doing it twice, I wonder if you could put together a working draft and highlight in some bright, cheery, non-red color like where the decision points are. And so, you know, a big decision point is like, what's the level of review, right? And so higher scrutiny for more important lands, you know, Belcher Town said no more than 15 acres, like they had size caps. So there's all these different ways of whatever. And so if you could put, I could see easily putting together a draft bylaw and just in yellow or pink or some cherry color saying, here are decision points and so we would get used to, okay, this is the structure of the bylaw. I frankly think you can do that by just looking at the Cape Cod version. As, as committee members, you'll see what it will be, like how it usually goes. But I do think, um, I don't really wanna go section by section with what Chris and the planning department could probably put together, not quickly, but you could put that together and present it to us and we could read through it and say, okay, we see where the big decision points are and how the structure goes. but. Are we going to go through the definition section and then, you know, like, and then, I don't know, just, it, it seems like it'd be better just to have a really good working draft highlighting the, the critical decision points. So at least we know what we have to do later. But, you know, I just think there's so much information we need to know as a committee um, before we get there, you know. But if we want to do it twice, I guess people, we could do it twice. I think 
be better to have a good working draft and kind of work off of that. I think that's more efficient. All right, thanks. I guess my own my own thought on that is I, I'd rather see this come in uh, piece by piece by piece, so we 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 know. Um, for those of us who are less familiar with planning and and zoning, um, we have a head start, and we can already start thinking about these gaps that need to be filled, these decisions that need to be met, and it's not like uh, you know a, all of them together at once when we see a a, a pretty much a full draft. Uh, but we see the evolution of it as it as it um, becomes available from Chris's um, from Chris, um, and that we can um, hone in on what are the what are these additional discussions we need to have, what sort of experts we need to bring in, what sort of research we need to to do, all along the while as we see um, see these gaps being uh, being um, presented to us in, in various different sections, uh, and and just assume sort of get the, get that going from going at the very beginning have people looked at the cape cod draft or the pvpta mm -hmm. kind of gone through that because mm -hmm. that that's always they're always saying you could decide this you could decide that so i would think that would you know if chris could do something like that and then i don't know it just seems okay all right great um any other thoughts before we move on? Great. Um, let me, um, I think what I'll, I'll do, and Laura, I, I apologize. I think, um, I'm not sure if you were prepared to continue your conversation from, or your just presentation from last time. I'm, I, I think we may be running short on time yet again, because uh, I did want to, um, um, open the floor for you know five five minutes or so um five seven minutes or so on other topics um and this gets gets to some on these gaps we need need to fill in and i think to some extent we'll be in a better situation to to sort of really understand what um some of the, this gaps gaps of information we need to fill in as, as we sort of see these cheery colored highlights in the in the zoning uh drafts that we need to uh, fill in, uh, but um, I did want to spend a little bit of time on um, uh, of um, trying to get ahead of that a little bit with with um, any other areas of uh, expertise, research, uh, experts, outside experts, or internal experts that we want to draw upon. Um, the one that you know has been sort of standing in front of us for a while is is the issue of batteries. Uh, uh, whether they're standalone or, or with solar projects, um, uh, how to think about batteries in terms of their safety, siting, um, um, fire protection, um, what the state of the technology is, what are the state states of the of the uh, controls with regard to fire prevention and so forth. Um, uh, that's one area that uh, it, it, I understand um, we need some support on um, i'm not sure if that's still in the works with a consultant to be hired uh or whether that's um whether there's an opportunity to bring in somebody with some expertise just for a half hour discussion to the committee or to the working group at some future meeting um so that was one i had has has been on my mind um i know um janet has put together um a bit of a list as well um and um uh, so I just want to spend a little bit of time on that. Um, so let's open the floor to that, but I'll start with Martha because uh, she had her hand up there. <laughs> so I jumped in, yes. Okay, I agree with the batteries uh, category, and I would say maybe we need both. I mean, Chris is getting the consultant, and maybe we also could just ask some uh, expert to give us a, a brief tutorial here in our meeting. And then the other thing that we had talked about some was possible, you know, site reviews, or I would really like to hear some specifics about each of the large ground mounted solar projects that exist in Amherst. I mean, Stephanie, I think you'd offered to give us a, a, a even a show and tell about the one at the uh, transfer station would be interesting. We have the two at Hampshire College, and then there's the one up on Pulpit Hill Road that I don't know anything about because I live down in South Amherst. 
And so I would be real interested to um, see some information on each of those and some of the specifics of how they were developed, what were the problems or challenges, uh, and anything else that's relevant to our understanding going forward. Great, I would, yeah, go ahead. Cinda Jones said her solar people would be happy to show us around their projects. So yeah, I, I, I would I I would think it would be helpful for all of us to see um, some of these projects up close uh, and get some some uh, um, expert you know involved in the projects to uh, um, you know talk to us a little bit about the design, uh, the installation, the construction process, and so forth. Um, and so how uh, um, I guess the issue is how do we organize that in terms of of um, asking the the appropriate people i guess in the case of the, the landfill projects it's it's stephanie um but um uh but then she'd have to organize that with folks at the at the uh, transfer station i presume um and then we'd have to organize it in terms of a time that works for everybody um now that it's going to start getting dark at five o'clock it's kind of a daytime thing um uh and then and then um the one out in uh in north amherst with cinda jones i think that's a real important one um, for us to look at as well. I've never, I've seen it from afar. I've never actually seen it up close either. Yeah, but maybe we could have some, some brief <laughs> summaries like from Stephanie and so on here at our Zoom meeting and then also th then have a, a site visit where we didn't have to have the whole explanation mm -hmm. while we mm -hmm. stood there. So does that work, Stephanie? <laughs> Um, yeah, I was going to actually suggest uh, coordinating, you know, in all, in all honesty, you know, a weekend day, a Saturday or a Sunday is really going to be more ideal mm -hmm. to try to pull together something like this. Um, and I, you know, it seems to me you could do a few sites in a morning or an afternoon mm -hmm. um, and sort of approach it that way. So, and I, you know, I could get background information, but, you know, and I can sort of reach out to folks, but, um, you know, yeah. I, I could just sort of reach out and see how, how you want to do this. I mean, I was thinking as we started talking about this, just sort of putting together a day where we had basically a solar site battery storage tour. And I know a few of the players for some of the projects, but not everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is there a bat? Well, the the uh, landfill has battery, right? Mm -hmm. Is there any other that you're thinking of the battery storage for Amherst? Um, uh, right now, off the top of my head, I'm not yep. sure if Hampshire has it or not. Um, I could mm -hmm. double check with Steve. I don't know that they do. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I mean, just talk to, speaking for myself, I'm not opposed at all to a a, a weekend day, um, uh, to do that, but. It's easy for me to say. <laughs> um, great, Laura. I was going to say, Stephanie, that um, I certainly um, know a lot of the owners of the projects around here. So if you need help, contacts. I'm happy to. I'm actually arranging a solar farm tour in Barry for a different project. Um, so just so everyone knows, it's not very exciting. Just so everyone you know can uh, uh, ground themselves in the panels <laughs> and the inverters and the yeah. You know, silence, but um, I'm happy to help. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I've been on enough uh, solar tours to know they're a little yeah. underwhelming once you get there. Well, but yeah. wind, wind, I mean, for... wind turbine tours are pretty cool if you can go up, the, the top <laughs> especially if you get to go <laughs> up in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's but, what but, I was going to. Yeah. I was going to ask, you know, do we need to go to all of these sites, or do we just yeah. want, you know, a few examples? Um, mm. yeah. So, I mean, the the solar landfill is probably the easiest. Um, and it does have battery storage. So, and I might even be able to reach out and see if the developer is available or willing to have somebody on site. Um, I don't know because obviously, if it's the contractor, they'd have to pay for them that day, but I could ask. Is who, the, who owns that site? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Janice. Do you know, Stephanie, who is the asset? Who owns the, owns the project um, is um, right now, I think, Carval. So they would be the have to be the ones that give you permission to access right. not the developer. Um, well, okay. well, yeah, I guess that's what I meant Carvel, but um, they're they're currently the folks that I'm in contact with. Okay. So it, is I should reach out to them. 
Is the Shitsbury site, um, is that a slope, a one in forest on slopes? Because that would be good to see as an example of how that works. Um, it's on Jill's property, I think, but I don't, I think it's owned by someone else. But right, that's and a, I, yeah. if you want to see that site, which obviously is an, un, an undeveloped site. So if you're, it, you know, I guess, is this tour, do you want to look at one developed site and one proposed site? Is that might be the way to approach it? But the Shootsbury one was built. Is there another one? Am I am I wrong? I mean, I I'd be quite curious to see um, oh, the Shootsbury one that the, the Shootsbury one that was already built. It's in the town of Shootsbury, not the um. I think oh. it was on Jones Land. I, I'm just so I thought I thought it was. I had talked to Michael De Chiara about it, and we were talking about the meadow and things like that. So I thought it existed. Not not that, the one that may. I, that's what I because of the other larger proposed um if it's in Shootsbury, i you know i can't really speak to we'd have to coordinate with someone and and yeah. Shootsbury folks to do that so i'm yeah. just thinking are there things here that are more specifically relevant to amherst that you'd want to see and we could it's it's a lot easier for me to coordinate something with yeah. projects that are here well apparently everybody is inviting us their things because michael said that'd be he'd be happy to do that one too i think it's a slopes one but i'm you know speaking from what i don't know there's well, who, who Ridge here in Amherst, right? It's not developed yet. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you mentioned the um, future solar site. Yeah. And that one's not, that's fairly flat site. Mm -hmm. There's not much slope to that site at all. Isn't, I mean, the one that's in North Amherst, that uh, just looking at it from afar, there's some slope there, isn't it? Isn't there? Could be wrong. But who, who said they were in, in touch with Cinda? Jones and 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 she was willing to um, get her folk, her solar folks to yeah, uh, she, said yeah. Any, she was very accommodating yeah yeah good um, okay um, I think that would be that, that would be good to take take them up on that I mean they could send a Jones the North Amherst one is send a Jones's property but also the Shrewsbury also is send a Jones property. Which doesn't surprise me. She owns a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that she owns the arrays. I think the shoots yeah. very owned by somebody else, and she owns the yeah. land. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure if she owns the. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. My my knowledge is very limited. Right. So the so she might own the land, but the project itself. So access to the project area itself has to be Coordinate. through um, yeah. another party. It wouldn't be through Cinda. Yeah, so well, maybe I could, that's but what she, she would meant put by me in touch with folks. the yeah. yeah, she could put me in touch with the appropriate folks. So I can reach out to Cinda um easily enough and um and then I can um talk to DPW and also the um Carval about the, the solar mm -hmm. project at the landfill. Okay. And would those two be sufficient or you know, I think on a weekend you probably those two would seem adequate I would think to address what you're trying to achieve yeah okay so I will follow up and get back to you and we'll try to do it sooner than later it's been warm but who knows <laughs> it's New England this could change next week so we could have snow next week so <laughs> yeah okay okay great thank you okay let me um end it there uh, and open it up for um, any comments from the public. We have four minutes to go. And we have- um, Okay, so two, yeah, we five. have five people. Just, mm -hmm. I know that um, there's always interest in the number of folks that are here as attendees. Um, if anyone from the attendee list here would like to speak, please digitally raise your hand and I will allow you permission to speak to the group. Kathleen, go ahead. Unmute yourself and you can speak. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for another interesting meeting. Uh, it seems really important that there be a complete map and list of the projects that are, are installed already, that are in progress already, 
and that are being proposed. Uh, certainly uh, the one on Shutesbury Road has been proposed, withdrawn, and there's, there's a clear understanding that it will be proposed once again. All of these things should be indicated on easy to access lists and maps for your committee for sure, and for the public at large. Um, I, I think that that should also include which projects involve uh, batteries, how many kilowatts are being um, represented, who owns the land, who has leased the land, uh, who developed those projects, who sold them to whom, oh my goodness, this would be a really valuable piece of, of, of information, a survey of information for all of us, frankly. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. Um, great, Laura, did you have a comment on that? Yeah, I just wanna say there's a list, you can access all of the, um, projects in Massachusetts via the state list of those that are in construction and those that are operational uh, fairly easily and find, you know, tremendous amount of detail. So I'm happy to provide that link to the group. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and I'll also add to that, that for, for my um, role in ECAC, uh, that I'm also uh, creating, uh, or I have to update, I have a list, but I want to update the list um, for all the projects that are in Amherst. Um, um and and um i can make that available as well but it, it's a bit work in progress but i'm doing that specifically for amherst as well so lauren Dwayne, if you want to get the information to me i can provide it in the resources great thanks and okay. is there anyone else yep. great given the uh the time appreciate everybody's um uh attention and, and and the public for for listening in as well and the comment um really appreciate that um a reminder to the group that our next meeting is friday november 18th again at 11 30 um by zoom um and uh stephanie yeah. yeah could we could we just ask i mean uh was there anybody that that had to be late or anything today because they just can't make eleven thirty, or was that just a, a one time thing on a couple of people's part? I I thought it was at one, and so I just randomly <laughs> looked at, I looked at my e my email and I was like, starting in one hour, what is she talking about? She sends that out. Okay. Yeah, just like, oh, God. Yeah, I have to drop down though, but I'm good for the 18th. I mean, 11:30 works. Great. Okay, and I can. Uh, I mean, after the semester, I'm open to um, revise revising that time back. But for now, um, let's keep it at the 11:30. Uh, and I think everybody was good with that. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yep. Right. Bye bye.